Hi, this is Mara Vlasic, your instructional technology coach. Today I'm going to walk you through how to use Hapara. Hapara is a program that the district pays for that helps us monitor what students are doing on their Chromebooks. I emailed out this Hapara user guide. On this guide, there's some great links um, for different resources for you for Hapara, and we'll come back to these in just a little bit. But first, I'm going to show you how to log in to the Hapara website and the different features that are available to you. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the teacher login. I can click on it here in my quick links and that's going to take me to the Hapara homepage. You will need to log in using your Google account. Um, once you do that, you will be taken to all your classes. So these are all of the classes that I am enrolled in as a teacher. Uh, we can also access these classes in the upper right hand corner right here under all classes. So I'm going to open up a class. And this is a test class with test students. When you open up a class, it's going to take you to Dashboard. Dashboard is actually a feature we don't pay for at the secondary level. So you need to click on Highlights. Everything that you're going to do in Hapara is going to live under that Highlights tab. So now I'm inside of a class. It's going to take a minute for all my student information to load. Right now I have five students enrolled in this class, but only one student is online. So this student is online. Um, these are my different options up here that I'm going to be looking at. So I'm going to start with browser tabs. Under browser tabs, I can see all the tabs that my student has open. Um, right now they have four tabs open. If I scroll over here to five items, I can also select the number of items to show inside these tiles. So if I want to guarantee that I see every tab that's open, I can go up to 25. Um, I'm going to stick with five right now. So these are the four tabs that my student has open. From browser tabs, I'm able to, uh, to close any tabs that my student currently has open. So if I did not want them looking at this Quizlet set, I can click the X and it will close that tab on my student's um, Chromebook. It will not give them any notification. That tab will just disappear. So this is in browser tabs where I can see what tabs my student has open on their Chromebook. Next to browser tabs is current screens. If I click current screens, it will show me what my student is currently viewing on their Chromebook. So this student is on YouTube. It looks like uh, NFL. Um, so I can see what they're viewing. If I want to take a picture of what my student is viewing, I can click the three dots next to their name and click view screenshot. What that's going to do is take a picture of their current screen. So current screen for student 02, it gives me a timestamp and a date stamp. It also gives me a link to um, the tab that is open. So the link to the website of what they're currently viewing. I can click save and that will save my screenshot. If I want to take a picture of my student's screen and have it save under snaps in Hapara, it's a little bit more complicated. So I have to go to the activity viewer up here. I have to find under class activity the link that I do not want the students looking at right now that I'd like to take a picture of. And next to that link, I can click the camera icon right here. So this will take a snap of that activity. I can then go to snaps and I can see that um, link right here. So class activity for student two, I can click on that and it will show me a picture of the student's screen. It will also have a um, link to the website that the student is looking at. This SNAP is only available for seven days, so for one week. So if there's something you'd like to do with this, um, you, you have to use this SNAP within, within seven days. Um, I can also send a message to the student, so it'll send directly to the student. Um, it will have a subject and a message, and I can include the timeline in the current screen. Um, so if you want the student to see a picture or to see the picture that you have taken of their screen, you can send it that way. There are a few other things that we can do either under browser tabs or under current screens for each individual student. So if I'm on student two and I click the three dots next to their name and their name will show up here. These are just named student one, two, et cetera, because they're fake student accounts. So if I click the three dots next to their name, I have a few options. Um, again, I can view screenshots. So I can take a screenshot of their screen. I can also send them a message. If I click send a message, any message that I type in this message box will show up in the bottom right corner of the student's screen and it will say from and the teacher's name. 
So if I type a message and click send message, that message will be sent to that student directly. Um, I can also share links. So if I have additional websites that I'd like that student to be able to access right now, um, or an updated link to a website, I can send that to the student directly. I can also schedule a session for this later, but I'm going to show you how to do that for the whole class. Um, so any links I, I want to send here, I paste here and then I click share links. Um, under those three dots, again, we can start a focus session or a filter session, and I'm going to talk about those as well. This is just another way to access them. If I would like to send that student an email directly, I can click email. If I've placed that student into a group and I'd like to edit which group that student is placed in, I can click edit group. I'm going to show you how to create groups using the feature over here in just a few minutes. And student notes is a feature that's not actually available to us. So those are all my options if I click the three dots next to the student name. There's a few other features in this highlights home page that I'd like to show you. One of them is pause screen. So I have the option of pausing all of my student screens in this class for up to 15 minutes. So if I click the off to turn on pause screens, it will count down for five seconds on my computer and it will pause their screens for a maximum of 15 minutes. I can turn this off at any point by clicking right here on the on button. And on this student's Chromebook, they'll get a message that says, heads up, your teacher needs your attention right now, screen is paused by, and then your name. So it'll look like this on their um, screen. Again, you can turn that off at any point by clicking on this on button to turn off pause screens. Another feature over here is groups. So if I'd like to place my students into groups and then put them into filter or focus sessions based on those groups, that's where I do that here. So I can edit my groups and create new groups. Um, editing groups allows me to add students to different groups. So I can click add and select the students I would like in that group. Um, this is a great feature if you want to differentiate the filter or focus sessions in Hapara based on groups within your class. Um, sort, this allows me to sort my students in different um, ways by their first name, last name alphabetically, or first name, last name reverse alphabetically. I can also sort them based on who was online first or offline first. And then the five items again shows me how many items in their browser tab they are viewing currently. Um, I can also send a message either, either to the whole class, to students, or to specific groups using that send message feature. I can also share links to the class, students, or groups um, using that share link feature in the upper right corner. Okay, the last thing I'd like to talk about is guided browsing. If I click the guided browsing button, I get two choices. I get to the choice of setting up a focus session. This will allow um, me to share up to 10 websites with my students and they will only be able to access those 10 websites. Or I can set up a filter session. This will prevent students from accessing up to five websites um, during that session time. So I'm gonna set up a focus session. This is the screen that pops up with all my options. Here I can enter up to 10 links that I will share with my students. Um, just so you know, any link that you share here that you add to this section um, will automatically open in the students on the student's Chromebook when you start the session. So I would really think about which links you want the students to access during this session um, because each of those links will open a new tab. And if you share 10 links, but they're not actually accessed accessing all 10 links, then it's opening up 10 extra tabs on their Chromebook. Um, you need to decide where students can go within the links, either the whole site or only the page. Um, this is important if you want students to finish an activity and only stay on one page during this session. It's also important if you're using Hapara as a lockdown type um, program for tests. So if you are giving them a test on Canvas, you want to share the link to just that test and click only this page. Um, you can also decide how long the session is for, so the length of the session. I recommend 
clicking both of these to yes, that you keep all tabs introduced in this session open. That means if the session ends and students are working on something in a link that you shared with them, that link won't disappear when the session ends. And I would also restore students' original tabs. So many of our students have multiple tabs open throughout the day from different classes um, of different work that they're that they are currently using. I would have this clicked yes so that those tabs do not um, get closed when you close your session. And then you decide who this session is for, the class, students, specific students in the class, and then you can select those students, or specific groups in the class, and you can select those groups. Um, you can also either start the session now, or you can schedule this session for later. So if I add a quizlet.com, okay. If I want to schedule this session for later, I can click yes. And then I can click here to choose the date and I can here choose the time and I can add in specific times if the times that are given to me don't match my schedule. Oops. 7.20 a.m. for example. And then I have to choose a date in the future. Um, once I've set my um, choices for my session, I can also save it as a template. This is something I suggest that you do is creating a template for like a regular Tuesday class or a regular past day class. Um, and I can click here and click save as a template and then I can name that template as well. Regular past day. The thing about um, saving templates is that it will not actually save the time. If you duplicate the template, you still have to go in and put the date and the time um, for that template. So I've saved it as a template. I can now schedule this session. If I go back to my highlights dashboard, over here there's a tab for schedule, and that's going to show me any sessions that I have scheduled for this week, all upcoming sessions, or any past sessions that I've done. Um, if I go to this week, I have a bunch of templates uh, or sessions already scheduled for um, examples for you. So I can, within this schedule, I can delete a session that I don't want to do anymore. I can also edit a session that I've already created and I can duplicate this session. So for example, I've created a template for first period regular day. Um, this is only within this class that I've created these templates or these sessions. So you will have to do this for each of your classes individually. But if I wanted to duplicate this session, a regular day session, I have three links. These are my three links that my students, I want my students to access every day. I can also click duplicate session it will duplicate it with the same um, links, but then I have to go down and choose a day and change the time. It will not save the time um, that I've that I have on the original session, but it will save the length of the time. So to set a template, we have to choose the start time, but then we have to choose the length of the period um, that we want to schedule this session for and then I can schedule this session. So under schedule up here is where I can look at all the sessions that I have scheduled for this specific class. Um, if we go back to guided browsing and we click set up a filter session, I will also have the option here on either of these to choose a template. So under focus session, I've created a bunch of different templates that I can um, edit or duplicate. And under filter session, I'd have to do the same thing. So if I click select, start a or set a filter session. In filter session, I can give my students access to up to five links. Um, they will not be able to access these links at all. So if I wanted to prevent my students from accessing, for example, YouTube, I can set how long this session is, who it's for, the class, students, or specific groups. I can also schedule this session for later and I can save it as a template. So if I wanted to save this as a template, I could say, YouTube block and save. Um, this would be a quick way to, to um, prevent your whole class or students or groups of students um, from accessing certain websites. So you could add um, different websites that you find students are often distracted by and save that as a template. You can also start the session right away if it's not something you want to schedule for later.
Um, if we go back to the Hapara user guide, I've created some uh, resources up here that will be helpful for you in creating and scheduling sessions. Um, under Hapara schedules, there's a link for Mount Lake Terrace High School schedules and Linwood High School schedules. And if we open this Google Doc as an example, on both schools, um, on both templates for both schools, I've created different day schedules. So here's our past day template for Monday, Wednesday, Friday. First period, I put the start time of the period and how long the period is. Um, these are the important pieces of information that you need when actually creating templates on Hapara is the start time and the length of the period. And I've done that for all of our different schedules. Um, same thing for Linwood High School. There are templates for your regular day um, that includes advisory. There's also templates for early release templates. So the day before our early release, the four periods uh, before, and then also the early release two periods with the start time and the period length. Um, I've also put the late start schedule on. If you find that there's other schedules you'd like to see on this um, template, please let me know and I will add them. If we go back to the user guide, there's also some links for tips and tricks, some FAQs and troubleshooting. If you run into any of these um, and would like to access the resource, they are here. I've also created the Your Sessions Cheat Sheet. If you click this link, it's going to force you to make a copy of this document. And this is a document that I want you to be able to edit and save for your own classes. Um, there are quick links at the top, but I'll just walk you through it really quick. So this section right here um, is a template for you to enter information about your particular courses. So if I was teaching Spanish um, and I wanted to have everyday links that I share with my Spanish 2 students, and then also to put any links that I sometimes use but are not f using every day. Um, I, created space for three different um, courses, but you can delete the columns if you find that you only have two courses by right clicking and click delete. And then adding links here that you use every day in that course. For example, in Spanish 1, if I want my students to always access the same four links every time I do a session, I would paste those here. I would then put links here that are sometimes used. Um, so I have a running list. This could then be a resource that you just copy and paste the links from um, when creating templates. And then below that, I have links to for focus browsing, like common links for browsing. Um, a lot of different Drive links. Remember that if you share a link to just um, their Google Drive, the students will not be able to access Docs, Slides, um, Sheets, etc. within those within that link. So you have to share specifically the resource that you want them to access. So if you're working with a Google Doc, you can either share the link to the specific Doc or share this general link to all Google Docs that they so they can access any Google Doc. Um, here's some links for filter browsing. Again, these are links that you do not want your students to be able to access. If you know of any others that should be added to the list, please let me know. And then there's um, some details on setting up a focus session and setting up a filter session. Some important things to note about a focus session is that any hyperlink or link that you share with your students, it will open that link on their Chromebook during the session. So you can share up to 10, but I would really think carefully about the links that you want to share with them so that you are not um, having them open up 10 new tabs on their Chromebook um, that they're not actually going to use. Students can use the read and write toolbar during a focus session. Uh, when sharing a PDF, it's important that you add the share link for the PDF from your Google Drive. So within your Google Drive, you're going to right click on the PDF and I can show you what that looks like. Here's a PDF. I'm going to right click on that PDF. I'm going to click share. And then I'm going to copy this link that anyone at the district can view. This will be the hyperlink that I share with them on the focus session. Um, if you want your students to be able to annotate a PDF, you can either not put them in a session and give them um, access to that PDF so they can annotate, or you can share with them the Kami link. So I put that here. Um, if you don't know what Kami is, it's an extension that allows students and teachers to annotate on a PDF. If you share this link extension with them, then they'll be able to open the PDF in, um, in Kami to then be able to annotate it. Um, so it's just important that you really 
think about what links you want your students to be able to access either during a general session where it's every day they're accessing the same links or during a specific focus session where you have specific links for them for that day. One other thing I wanted to add was about having students in a focus or a filter session. So if I go back to Hapara, I've placed my students in a guided session. Um, and so right now I only have one student online, but when you put them in a focus or filter session, you'll get this bar at the top. Um, you can click details to see what the session is and see um, who's in it and what links the students are, are given. I can also release all students from this session if I want to end the session early or next to the student's name I'll get this little icon right here that says release student from this focus session. So if I click that it will ask me again to release the student and I can click release and that student will be released from the focus or filter session I've set up. Um, that can be a good option if you have students in a session for a test and students are finishing early, you can release them from that session. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Please reach out if you have any other questions or would like more information about Hapara and I'd be happy to help you. Thanks.